Yeah, good day YouTubers. Tidro Tool again with another video. In today's session, we're going to talk about offset grinding on the steel USG grinder. There's a small technical group that follow this information. So I want to sort of present the latest findings that I've got. And if we look at the back of the grinder, there is an offset of about three degrees. And that offset is you can see a larger gap here and a smaller gap there. So the axis, if you have a look between the hinge of the fixed base and the moving head, it is not uh, parallel. It's offset by three degrees. Why do we have an offset of three degrees? Well, that had me puzzled for years, and it's had a lot of other people puzzled for years as well. And there is a great answer for that. Because what happens when you have an offset hinge like that, a large gap on one side and a smaller gap on the other side, means that the hinge won't tilt equally. Like imagine if a door was offset. If a door was offset, in other words, let's just say you put uh, six or seven millimetres packing on the hinge from the top to the bottom, the door would open crooked. So by offsetting this hinge, it moves differently. And what actually happens, irrespective of where you move that head, when you pull the grinding wheel down, it moves to the left side. It moves away from the tooth. And we can demonstrate this. So then you would say to yourself, why would you want to move the grinding wheel away from the tooth? So we'll just turn the grinder back around and we'll show you. Okay, so what I'm saying, in this upright position, when we move the grinder down into the grinding position, and roughly, we'll just measure the distance that it's going to move. We move about here, so... What are we talking? We're talking about around about 80 millimetres, is it? Yeah, look, it's about 80, about 85 millimetres from there to the wheel, right? Depends how much wear that you've got on your wheel. So from that distance, 85 millimetres, when you pull this right down to the bottom, it moves over about 5 millimetres that way because of that hinge, right? Because of that hinge, so it doesn't matter how you tilt this head, that hinge is offset on its axis, and that means it's going to have a different movement rather than straight up and down. And that movement created is going to move that way, and we'll demonstrate that with a magnet and a ruler. So there's a magnet and a ruler. And what I want to do is zoom in there and show you that that's sitting on zero. Now... If I was to move that head down, that ruler should stay on zero. But watch what happens. You see it moving? There it is there. That would be approximately between five and six millimetres. I haven't measured it, but it's something like that there. So that moves away from the tooth. And if we let it come back up, There we are in the upright position. So we'll do that again. We'll zoom out just to show people that. We've got a magnet and we've stuck the ruler on there. And as we pull this down, if we zoom in there, you'll see that it's moved about five millimetres, six millimetres. Okay. Conclusion time. What is the, uh, what's going on here? Why are we, why are we doing that? Okay, so I don't have anything official from still as to why that when we lower the handle down that it moves five millimeters away from the tooth. And there's a bit of a user group that I'm in and there's a bit of a discussion going on about why this is doing this and the conclusion is that it's doing that because it aids cooling 
And what I mean by that is that when the grinding wheel first comes in contact with the working corner, it'll start to grind the working corner, but as you pull the grinding wheel down, it'll move away from the working corner and continue only grinding the part necessary. Rather than grind the whole tooth simultaneously, it's grinding as it goes down and it's moving away from where it ground last. This is why the USG grinder, you can grind and it barely warms the tooth up as opposed to using an Oregon grinder or any other grinder. So this three degrees offset on the rear scale causes the grinding wheel to move away as you pull it down. Now, I haven't calculated uh, how much from the 85 millimetres that it went down, it moved six millimetres. If you divide that all in, when we start grinding a tooth from the highest point of the tooth, and we'll just sort of get a tooth to demonstrate that, it's around about five millimetres, the height of the tooth. And so when the grinding wheel, actually I'll get a full chisel, that will explain it even a lot better. So what I'm saying to you is... When the grinding wheel comes in contact on that working corner, the top plate, once it's ground and it continues down, you'll end up with a couple of thou gap. It might only be one thou or two thou. I don't know. I can't measure it. But something like that, which means that the grinding wheel isn't touching here, so it's not overheating it. If the grinding wheel continually touches, it's going to overheat. So as it moves down to the gullet, it continually has a little air gap. So the distance from here to here is about five millimetres. This is actually brilliant geometry. Uh, it, it looks still... German engineers are unbelievable. Now, the other thing is that's not the only offset that the USG grinder has. So we've got the offset at the back... We've got the B sliding scale. That's nothing uh, unusual. But we've also got an offset on the C scale. And we've mentioned this many times before. And this is how still uh, work out uh, how the USG grinder changes geometry differently than what an Oregon grinder will. So we'll just have a look at that. We'll zoom in and have a look. And we'll put a chain on, and that will explain things a lot better. It's taken many, many years to really understand this grinder. It's totally different than uh, Oregon. It looks the same, but it works different. Okay, so what the Germans have done is they've put the pivot point. This is what we call the pivot point, this black line. When we move this vice from side to side like that, it pivots where that black line is. But there's the tooth, about 17 millimetres away from that pivot line. Being 17 millimetres away from that pivot line means that this tooth moves across the face of the grinding wheel quite a lot. And we can demonstrate that. And we'll just set all the angles up for you and we'll demonstrate it. Okay, so if you sort of focus right about there, you'll notice that there's a little bit of white tape that's uh, on the grinding wheel. There. And then that white tape is right in the middle of the chain where the drive link is. Now, when we come around here, what I want to draw your attention to is that when we set this to 30 degrees, the top plate, you'll notice that that centre line now is about 12 millimetres away, right? So there's the edge of the tooth and there's the centre line. Uh, sorry, I just knocked that. And now you've got to set the B scale 15 millimetres. When you adjust the B scale, it puts, I'll just try and move it back, it puts the tooth 
very close to that white centre line. And that's what I mean by offset grinding. They've offset the tooth from the pivot point by 17 millimetres. They're using the B scale. The B scale is in millimetres, right? It's not in degrees. I've measured it before with a ruler. It's in degrees. Totally different. Now, a lot of people think that that's given 10 degrees downward tilt because they're used to a slide-in vise on an Oregon. When you use a slide-in vise on an Oregon, it can be used for two things. It can be used to centre the grinding wheel uh, so that we're grinding in the middle of the centre line. So as the grinding wheel wears down, you can use that as an offset. But it's used for 10 degrees downward tilt mainly. Still don't recommend 10 degrees downward tilt. But anyway, the main focus of this was that the grinding wheel moves away from the tooth as it keeps coming down. And the whole idea of that is that when it moves away, it's going to give some uh, an air gap of maybe a thou. It may only be a thou. And that will mean that the tooth won't overheat. The tooth doesn't need to be ground any more than it does. So in other words, if you look at a regular Oregon grinder, because it's not offset, they can offset it as well. It's just offsetting the hinge, right? And when you don't offset the hinge, the grinding wheel will come down and will uniformly grind the whole profile here of the tooth. It'll grind the whole, whole profile, top plate, side plate, simultaneously. By grinding everything all simultaneously, it heats it up much quicker. As the grinding wheel comes down, if you can move the grinding wheel out by a thou, you've already ground, the grinding wheel has already come down and ground this. So given an air gap of about a thou, will increase the cooling efficiency and it will keep doing that till you get down to the bottom. It is a brilliant piece of uh, German engineering. And that's uh, why the back of the grinder, if you have a look, has got a three degree offset. Okay, to demonstrate this roughly, I've got a piece of cardboard there and I've got three degree offset. So it's a hinge, but it's not parallel. It's three degrees offset. And when you bend that over, you can see that it doesn't line up at the side, right? It's offset. So it's offset in its movement. And this is exactly what the offset at the back does. It moves away in that direction uh, and by moving away in that direction it aids the cooling uh, that's probably the best information uh, that myself and others currently agree with on one of the forums that we agree that the reason it still did that was to aid cooling cannot see any other reason because I was always puzzled as to why they offset that, and I'm 99% sure that is the reason why it's offset to aid cooling. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.